the Geek Speak show at WonderCon Anaheim with us. Will Bates, Will, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. So, so how, is this your first WonderCon or have you been here before? This is my first time. This it, place is crazy. Well, I was going to say, have you been to the huge one, the San Diego Comic Con? No, I haven't. I've been to New York Comic Con years yeah. ago, but well, I've never been to... Close. Yeah. But this this is the little brother, of the little, little brother Got it. for the big one. So if you can survive this one, you're ready for that one. Over right, there. totally. Yeah. Have you had a chance to Yeah, a little around? bit. Just for like 20 minutes wandering about. This is like the best people watching yeah. ever. I, people are pretty committed, aren't they? Has anybody... Not literally, but has anything like a cosplay or anything jumped out at you? Not yet, but they will. There was a like a 15 foot tall old school Megatron that I kind of liked <laughs> earlier yeah. that um, caught my attention. It's probably the guy from a, a year ago that was a life size Voltron. He was having trouble getting oh, out of the no. door. It's probably <laughs> Megatron this time around. Probably. Yeah. So, so for for you're here for WonderCon, not to watch the cosplayers, although that's cool. You're here because you're on a panel. That's right. Talking about music mm -hmm. to scare you. That's right. To set the mood. So I was talking to the Neiman Brothers earlier, and let's see if your answer is a little bit different than theirs. Uh, today, we had horrors taken. It's a little bit different with, with the movies that are out there, with the shows and everything. So mm -hmm. for you, how do you approach writing for horror? You know, I approach every project differently. It just kind of depends on what it is. But I think in the end, it's all about um, getting under the hood of a character and understanding the emotion. I think that for something to be scary, to get to feed off of the emotion of a character and to really feel connected to that character is like a way of making something more frightening. If you yeah. kind of make that connection, then you can kind of take someone on a, on a journey. Yeah, and, and on, which ones are you going to talk about on the panel? I'm not sure which show um, Yeah, I don't know either, but I, I guess, I mean, some of the more recent things that I've worked on are The Magicians yeah. and Night Flies and Charmed and... Uh, I just did a little Frankenstein yeah, movie. Honestly, I'm a fan of all of them, so, but I was going to make sure, like, which one should we talk yeah, about? Yeah, I don't know, really. Panel? Yeah, so, it's up so, to you. <laughs> so let's, actually, let's go with, with The Magicians, because okay. it's, it's in the current season. That's so right. For yeah. that one, um, and that one, honestly, to me, it's a kind of a personal show, because uh, Lev Grossman has been on the show with us uh, long before the oh, TV cool. show even came on. Right he on, talked great. about the books. Yeah. And we, we were I love pretty him. much there watching the whole thing. So with you, how early did you come on to the project? I came on while they were shooting the pilot. So um, I'm a collaborator of Mike Cahill. Mike mm -hmm. Cahill did, shot the pilot and he kind of brought me on board and he was like sending me dailies and told me to go and read the books. Of course, that's the first thing that I did. So I read the books and then read the script and kind of understood how they were taking the story a little differently. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it was unusual. Normally with television, you're, you're sort of slapped on at the end of the process, yeah. at the end of the edit. So I was kind of involved very early and then you know there was like something of a hiatus be between the pilot and the second episode right. so we were able to sort of really fine tune stuff but mm. i think most of the themes that are still in you know this fourth season were really kind of born in that first spurt of writing yeah and we've talked to composers on the show before and i, I, I don't know if this is a new trend because i'm noticing because before the trend was like, like you said you come towards the end mm -hmm. yeah, the music is usually the last thing that that's thought about but now I'm seeing where you're actually brought in as the writing is starting, even before they start shooting. Yeah. So for you, does does that help or does? I I love that. I love to be involved as you know as early as possible. Yeah. It's not always you know that practical, but yeah, to be like reading a script, to be kind of responding with themes and that kind of thing. It's it's great. It's also with TV. It's pretty rare that you get to sit down with the director. So. While he or she is shooting, it's kind of a lovely moment to have that collaboration in the same way that you would on a movie. Because yeah. normally with TV, by the time shooting is finished, there's like two days of the edit and then the director is on to the next thing. So to be able to kind of have that precious time where you can like really, you know, do stuff and like, you know, yeah. get into it in the same way that you do with the showrunners later on in the season. Yeah. It's kind of a good now, on, on good the process. magicians, all the actors are great, so this is not a knock on them. But for you as a composer, is there one particular Ooh, character you really like writing music for? That's really hard. <laughs> I adore all of them, I, especially with that show, because it's just, I feel like it's gone on such a journey, and I've yeah. they're like my family at this point, <laughs> those guys. Um, I love writing for Elliot. I mean, he's just amazing, and Summer's hilarious. But, I, you know... It always it always began with Quentin and Julia. Yeah. Like there's, I have like themes that were written for them specifically that have kind of like changed and morphed. So I, I feel like, in the end, it, it it started as his story, didn't it? So yeah, yeah. yeah I, actually, when you say that, I was thinking of because uh, I spoke to I think last year or a couple of years before to not a composer but to the uh, the costume designer. Oh, cool. And kind of in, in along the same lines when you were saying that is. You have the themes that you that you develop from the from the from the first season, mm -hmm. 
So when they come back for the following seasons, how do you keep the same theme, but at the same time make it sound different? Still? That's kind of part of the joy of writing on a show that's episodic and one that's successful and has multiple seasons. It's, yeah. it's such a pleasure to have that kind of, that quiver, of, that artillery of, of themes, you know, and be able to kind of change the instrumentation. And one of the great things about The Magicians is that there's all these different dimensions and, you know, characters go to different worlds and there's ways of changing the context. And I think that that's kind of my, my main thing. There are, you know, like Quentin and Julia's theme, for example, was written on the synthesizer. And then in the more recent episode, there's like a piano, sort of a, like a old fashioned sounding ostinato right. version of it. So, you know, when you have those melodies that are born in the first couple of episodes of a show, and then you're able to like change their context, that's kind of a, a great pleasure, I think. Yeah. Now, obviously, you didn't write the music for that, but how, how early were you told that there was going to be a, a musical episode last season? And I think it aired they, we're recording it, this it, for this season. It aired on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah the day before yesterday. Um, they tell me right before they start. Well, actually, so they start shooting in June normally, and I normally August is like destroyed for me by the musical <laughs> episode because I yeah. obviously have to get involved before they start shooting. So we have like pre-records done so that when they're shooting, they, they're kind of doing everything in the right tempo and that kind of thing um, so it's pretty early on so this this season's musical episode was it's almost like a year-long thing you know so I I get it ready for the shoot and then and then we kind of work on it once they're done we work on it in post and then up until the mix I think that one mixed in like February maybe so yeah it's uh it's it's pretty I feel like every every season they kind of up their game and it gets yeah. more crazy like the musical episode gets more uh, ambitious, you know, so this yeah. one was definitely... Although, I mean, I don't know if it could be a surprise for next thing. I mean, I mean, at this point, I think maybe they're kind of expecting it. It's now. kind of an expectation, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, for all of us, especially for us that are involved in the production of it. It's like, what, what's what's the new bar? I've heard some some talk. It's going to be it's gonna be wild, let me just say that. Yeah, so. So, so, I mean, talk about, again, I, I'm not sure which ones you're gonna focus on on the panel, but uh, talk about the other one, the other shows that you also are composing for. Um, so I just... Uh, also just got released this year was Night Flyers mm -hmm. um, on uh, Sci-Fi, and uh, that was a great experience. It was a 10 episode, George R. R. Martin, science fiction thing, very different to The Magicians, much more obviously otherworldly. And I feel like the, the horror element of that show is a different animal to The Magicians, which is much more, you know, there's a kind of like comedic almost edge yeah. and a, like a self-awareness to The Magicians, whereas Night Flyers for me was kind of just straight up horror. Um, which was great and like a kind of a different sort of challenge. So there's that show and another show called Charmed, which of course is like, you know, stepping into big shoes mm -hmm. of a, a very loved show. And that's been a joy to work on. Um, and I have a, another show that I'm working on right now called Unbelievable for Netflix um, with Merritt Weaver and, uh, and Tony Collette. So that, and that's a, like a kind of detective mm. show. So pretty different. Yeah. So, so you get to scare and then maybe mostly mystify yeah. people? Yeah, mystifying. One? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So to let them know where, where can they follow your social media, websites, where can they follow your work? Um, on uh, uh, My uh, Instagram handle is Fall On Your Sword and uh, it's also the name of my music production company. And uh, yeah, I mean, you just Google me, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean you, we're talking about the uh, creating horror, sure. music for horror on this one, but is there any genre that you haven't done that you would love to That's write That's a for? great question. Um, I'd love to do a Western. The first record I ever bought was a Ennio Morricone record, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I bought it when I was, like, I think, seven years old. Mm -hmm. I'd love to do a Western. That would be a kind of a weird dream. So yeah, who I knows? Would, I would love Hollywood <laughs> to start doing more Westerns. Yeah, no kidding, the, the right? first thing. <laughs> yeah. So again, Will Bates, thanks a lot. Thank you. And Cheers. enjoy WonderCon. Right on, thank you.